Hi, I'm Darren, one of the trainers here at Baxi in Warrington, and today we're going to be looking at possible reasons for your E133 error code on our Baxi 600-800 range. So, first thing we're going to check is have we got a block condense? And to do that, we'll check at the condense pipe underneath the boiler. So, importantly, don't forget to get your bucket ready. What we're now going to do is disconnect our condense pipe to check that we haven't got a blockage in the pipe. If we have, that should discharge water and we can catch it in our bucket. So, another way of checking to see if we've got a block condense we may have water built up in the heat exchanger which has then given us an E133 error code through our electrodes. The easiest and safest way to do that is by just slackening off the electrode screws. If we see any sign of water, we know that we've got water in the combustion chamber. What we can then do is re-tighten our screws, like so. So, if we have identified that we've got water in our heat exchanger, the safest method to drain that water is by using our condense pipe. And what we'll do there is we'll just disconnect our condense pipe and making sure we've got a bucket ready, we'll discharge into our bucket. So, first thing we're going to do is check that our electrode lead is nice and secure. Once we've done that, we're going to check our electrode. To do that, we're going to remove the electrode lead, remove the earth tag, and then we've got two securing screws. We'll remove these screws. There's one. Two. We're then going to remove the electrodes and inspect and check the spark gap if it needs adjusting or cleaning, we can check that and then refit. Refit the electrode. So there's our earth tag. And then our earth electrode lead. So as we can see, we've got our E133 error being displayed. Now, to proceed through this next checking phase, I need to reset my error. And what I'm now gonna do is check my gas working pressure. So, now, we're gonna check our working pressure. To do this, I'm gonna isolate my gas valve and connect my analyzer tube to the gas valve. open my gas valve and now we're going to look at our working pressure. Okay so with our analyzer connected to our gas test point we need to then ensure the boiler is in high fire rate. So we'll put it into high fire then we've also got to ensure that if we've got any more gas appliances within the property that at least one other appliance is on. Once we've ensured all those are correct we need then to check that we've got at least 18 millibars working pressure showing on our analyzer. So we've got our analyzer connected to our test point. We've put the boiler into high fire mode. If we've got another gas appliance in the property, don't forget to turn another gas appliance on. And what we're looking for now is anything above 18 millibars on our analyzer. As we can see here, we've got 20.9 millibars, so we can now assume our gas working pressure is correct. So finally, once I've completed all of my checks, I'm going to isolate my gas supply, remove my tube, tighten my test point, open my gas supply, and then finally check with some LDF that we're all nice and tight and we've got no leaks.